I wish I have a beautiful voice like those two, three ladies tonight. Beautiful voice. RNG Plus, the singers tonight, the leadership. Thank you so much. A voice of this special number. I wish I have those voices. I had a secret many, many years ago when I was growing up in my elementary days. I tried to compete in a singing contest and also a declamation contest in the same night but different spot. I tried and so I was hoping in that singing contest and declamation contest in another, another area, I was hoping to get my prize either one of them. And to my surprise, I lost them all. I didn't win. After high school, I started my study in a secretary job. And then later on, I worked in the government for four years and providentially got opened the door for me. And I was now at the Bible school and for just six to eight months time, rigid Bible training, I had the major topics of the theology, about six topics of the theology, and a little knowledge about Christian growth. My senior pastor, or my senior instructor said to me, Gunny, I am appointing you tonight to preach in a public meeting. I said, Pastor, sir, are you joking? No, I want you to know you'll be the speaker tonight. It was a public meeting. I was just three to four months old in the Lord. Now, you know, the topics I learned, the theology I learned, at least one theology at least, if we can shorten it, you can teach it in one hour time. I was surprised the six theology plus little Christian growth, I did it in 28 minutes because I was fearful and I was conscious of my delivery. You know, tonight, many of you tonight have need in your life. Some of you have problems. Some of you have burdens that needs to be lifted, lifted up tonight. Yes. Others have fear. You have fear in your heart Amen. that create not to trust your employer, anybody, not even to trust your friend, the church, even your family. You need the dust of God tonight for your fear. That issue will be dealt tonight and God will answer that this evening. Many can appreciate at this present time the life in Australia or in America or England because of the surging interest rates. Not only that, because of the rising crimes in, into this country, I heard to some of the testimony of some Australians that many, many years ago, Australia was a place where you can leave the door unlocked or open and there is no problem whatsoever. This time is no longer so. Now in this land of prosperity, in this land of plenty, many are lonely. And one of the brothers who you have heard tonight, in the peak of success, in the Senate pool, in the pinnacle of material prosperity, he was lonely. And many people in this land of Australia, very rich country, plenty and everything in natural resources, many people, they are just existing but not living some of them they don't want to wake up in the morning some of them because life seems a boring cycle and since life has no fulfillment it is tiring no meaning they, they want to they don't want to wake up in the morning you know our brother testify about how he found the Lord Everything he was looking for fulfillment. He was looking for the meaning of life. He was looking for peace and happiness. And the most important gem that he did not experience, never experienced when he was growing up, is the love, whether it is a relationship with a friend or loved ones, and especially a relationship with God. And later on, in the journey of life in Australia, he found the Lord that solved all his questions about life. Yes, there's still problems, but Jesus at the present time 
is helping him. Amen? Yes. That's the beautiful thing about knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. Tonight, you can make a commitment that can change your entire direction. Yes. The simple act of commitment Amen. will be open to you a life of peace, yes. a life of contentment, a life of joy, and a life of happiness. Lord. You'll be given that great opportunity Amen. tonight before the end of this meeting. Regardless of your need tonight, it might be mental need, peace of mind, it might be emotional need, yes. some kind of thing that happened in the past, and you're hiding it. Nobody knows it but you by yourself. But God knows that. And God can deal with that tonight, regardless of that need. It might be a memory of the yesterday, sure bound of the memory of the yesterday. And God will give you the opportunity to be released and to be able to experience that God is at work and He is willing to say, I wish above all things that you must prosper one of the prayer of the saints of God that you will be blessed in everything. Yes. Let's pray tonight. Father in heaven, we thank you. We pray that the Holy Spirit will speak to our hearts tonight. May the Holy Spirit, the third person, the Trinity, will draw our hearts together to the feet of you, Father. And may you help us tonight to understand the message, to experience the true meaning of life to your Son, Jesus Christ. We bless you, we honor you, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. I have a topic tonight in one of your beautiful, beautiful story of a man, a splendid young man, who was looking for something very, very special in his life. And one day, he met the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. In the book of Matthew chapter 19, the Bible says, when Je Now, a man came up to Jesus, chapter 19, and says, And asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, obey the commandments. Which ones? The man inquired. Jesus replied, Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. And love your neighbor as yourself. All this I have kept. The young man said, What do I still lack? Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go, sell your possession, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then, come, follow me. Now, when the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. And Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth. It is hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, for the second time, God is emphasizing a point. Again, I told you, Amen. it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, I want to cite to you some beautiful, beautiful things about this young man according to the word of God. The Bible says that this young man had a splendid you. Now, the word is splendid. When I look at it in the dictionary, it says, this man, this young man, is worthy of praise. It is not only a praise that is just casual praise, it is elevated praise, highly praised for this young man. It is a person showing some kind of splendor. Now, the man in this story, as the Jesus relate to us tonight, was highly admired. Now, praises, good reports, positive remarks, were all his daily reward. Yes. He was the talk of the community. He was the talk of the town. Now Osama bin Laden is the talk of the world, but it's in another context. He's the extremist in the jihad. But the young man in the Bible was a model to many younger generation, even the old folks. He was the hero even to the younger generation. Now Australia, like any other nations of the world, they have heroes, especially in the music industry. We have the first Australian idol by the name of Guy Sebastian, followed by others like Casey Donovan, Damian Lee, and Shannon No. Many Australians were challenged and tried their voices singing in the farm, singing while driving to work, now singing in the room or in the bedroom, in occasional basis, they were singing in their office, and even in their bathroom. 
and they have a smile of joy, try to mimic their idols, someone that they treasure, and they try, some of them, they try to become the next Australian, Australian idol. Amen. I thank God, I knew it was not my gift, so I stopped competing. <laughs> now the young man was appreciated, and he was welcome wherever he went. He was one of the few who is worthy of high praise. What a privilege, what an honor for a young as he was. Another thing that we can say about this young man, the Bible says, this young man, he was living a good moral life. Now the Bible says, he did not murder, he did not commit adultery, he did not steal. He speaks truth, he honors the father and mother, he loves his neighbor as he loves himself. Now, this young man, if you try to visualize and understand the beautiful description of this young man, he was above reproach. In our modern time, it is a life of excellence. Now, if, this, if he is a student in today's time, here he, this young man has a mark of all A's in the, the highest rating and can hold a valedictorian honor when he graduates. This is the young man. Now, his commitment in his character traits, he did it well. Now, in the eyes of men, in the eyes of his friends, in the eyes of his town folks, he deserved heaven. He is the image of a godly person. The question is, does he really deserve heaven because he followed the Ten Commandments? Is see the magna come laude of good moral life because he fulfilled, he fulfilled them all. He did a good job in following the law. Bless his heart. But did he get the passport to enter into the kingdom of heaven because he was a good moral person? Now some of you tonight are probably like this young man. You did not steal. You did not murder. You did not commit adultery. You obey your parents. You obey your father. You obey your mother. From your youth up, up to this present time. You love your neighbors. Maybe you're a student tonight. You are responsible in your study. Maybe you're a college or a university student. You work so hard because you want to impart to give something to the community where you came from. And to some of you, you work so hard so that your parents will be proud and be happy of you. Thank God for your effort to become a good student of his high school and university. Now, as parents, Maybe both of you, you are example of honesty. Tax time is coming. You don't pay your tax. You pay the taxes not only on time, but exactly before God. You are an honest person. God bless your heart. Maybe some of you are working. Many of you are working in a company. You clock in on time. You clock out in time. You are honest and faithful to your employer. God bless your heart. Single parents or widows and orphans. In spite of your condition, you are calling upon God and you're still believing that God cares for you. What a beautiful heart. Grandparents, grandfather, grandmother tonight, your devotion to your church, transmit the message to your grandkids. Now all these things are good and appreciated, but Amen. these things does not guarantee you and me that you are destined to heaven. The good work that you did did not promise you that you are free from sin. No one will be made perfect by following all the good things written in the book of the law, the ceremonial laws and everything the Bible says. No one will be made perfect. The Bible says, cursed is everyone who does not continue in all the things that are written in the book of the law to do them. In other words, if I follow the, ten com the nine commandments or the eight commandments and fail in one, the ceremonial law well, with more than 200 plus of things added. If I cannot follow them all, I am still guilty before man and before God. You follow the golden rule. You pray always. You are a responsible citizen of Australia. When you do all the demand of this nation, of the Old Testament, but fail in one, one sin, one failure, it will disqualify you to be a candidate to heaven. Your good words cannot save you. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. The Bible says,